Okay, so in today's video, what I wanted to discuss was wiring in an AFR gauge, wideband gauge for your, for any car. This can, this method will work for any car. It's fairly straightforward and it's very simple. Um, what you need in order to do this is you need some wire stripping tools, some heat shrink, some scissors, an O2 sensor removal tool, you can use some solder as well. That will be very beneficial. You'll also need a 10 millimeter and a seven millimeter. And that's pretty much it. So what I did for my car is I have my AFR gauge sitting on my, my AFR gauge is sitting right here until I can get a pillar pod mount. I'm gonna also have a boost gauge and then I'll have this pod all done or I might mount it up here, I don't know, uh, we'll still see. Um, my gauge is wired off of a switch, so I can come right here and I can turn my switch on and my gauge will automatically turn on, much like how if you have your switch here and you turn this on and off, you can control all of the, the lights. What I did for my car, <laughs> is I came through here through the brake, brake booster area open. and down there I have my wires loom through that little grommet section. I will be cutting a slot into that so that I could uh, put the grommet back in because unfortunately there's no way for um, unfortunately there's no way for the grommet to just slide back on with this stuff it's just not it's too much stuff in the way um i have my positive and negative terminals running along the back side of the engine bay they're tied to other hoses like how they do from the factory they just loom everything together it runs across the whole engine bay over here and i have mine uh, and then I also have it running through the fender here. So here's one of the wires. Then I have it tucked up into the fender, wrapped around my little headlight deal. And then that is my ground, my power wire. This is the uh, piggyback right here. I have two 10 amp fuses on it. And I just have it tucked away in here because I'm gonna be adding another uh, fuse for something else that's going on the car. Um, and then I have it you can close the lid over it, snaps on, there's no issues. Comes out of here and it is following the rest of the wire through the section of the car, through the back. And I think I did a very a nice job on it because it's very clean. You don't see any wires hanging around anywhere and nothing is near any heat. And that is all uh, taken care of, so key on my car and we have our gauge as far as what I did for the switch is just ran through here with the floorboard down and I'll show you guys what I did for that this is the 300334 X series wideband um, comes with install Comes with install instructions, but uh, it's actually pretty straightforward. What you have in the kit is the O2 sensor itself. Um, with my car, I have catless downpipes, and we have two upstream O2 sensors and two downstream O2 sensors. So here I have catted downpipes that I can show as an example. Like I said, we have two upstream O2 sensors on my car and two downstreams. Um, what I'll be doing is I'll be deleting the two downstream O2 sensors and plugging off one of those. Okay guys, so I have the harness ran through the grommet right there. And there's also a little plug. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. There's like a little hole that was here. As you can see right here, there's this little square hole. I don't really want the harness running next to the engine, so I'm dropping it through there, and then I'm going to pull it underneath the car, make sure that it's tucked away properly, and then plug it into the, the downpipe right there, as you can see. 
and then right there it'll be plugged in. It ended up passing right through. You just put your hand flat like this, reach all the way back and you'll be able to grab it. This is the harness itself right here. So I can, I can pull it as much as I need into the actual car. Uh, what I have here is this fuse tap and I have two 10 amp because that's what this takes. Uh, as you can see there on the top of the deal. Uh, and I'm gonna tap into this, use my extra wire right here, loom it through the engine bay, and then loom one of these as a ground connector on the already dedicated pins and wire it that way for the power and ground. Okay, so what we have here is I had some black wire that I showed you guys earlier. That black wire I've extended all the way out to that side. And then I've also extended the wire and tapped it into this little fuse tap here with two 10 amp fuses. Ran, I'm gonna run both wires all the way through to that little grommet area that we had. I have this wire uh, clothes hanger that I'm using to push it through. And I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just a power in the ground, but a consistent one so that there isn't any issues. Okay, so as far as with the wiring, um, I have my switch here. So this is just me testing it out. Um, you're gonna take the negative wire and loop it through on the either side of the terminals. And then the positive hot wire is just ran directly to the actual gauge. So if I, I have it, so I have it turned off. I'm gonna flip the switch. So I'm gonna flip the switch and Boom, turns on, starts heating up the sensor. Flip it back, it turns it off. Flip it again, turns it on. So yeah, so now I'm gonna clean it all up. Um, make sure that everything is, you know, secure and stuff. And then, you know, should be all. Boy, popcorn. Jeez, that popcorn, that's what I'm trying to get. So the car is jacked up now and I'm gonna use my O2 socket removal tool and we're gonna go ahead and put the O2 sensor inside of the car now that it has been calibrated for free air. It's pretty simple and it's pretty straightforward. There isn't a whole lot that you have to, uh, you don't have to tap into anything else. All you need is a power and a ground, whether or not you wanna do that through the radio or something like that, uh, go for it. I do not recommend tapping into the footwell lights or any of the other controls that are accessories because the gauge will uh, turn off on you when you're driving. But besides that, I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, mine isn't done as far as being set up because I, like I said, I need to, like I said, I need to do my pillar pod set up and figure out what I'm gonna do for that. I'll even flip the switch again to turn it back on. And as you can see, um, it's all good. So, so if you guys enjoyed today's video, please remember to drop a like, comment down below, subscribe to the channel. This has been Lucky and I'll catch you guys in the next video.